Xander, you're entering the week at number two. Can we get some just comments on you making your eighth consecutive playoffs appearance dating back to your rookie season? Yeah, different feel than my rookie year. feel like an old man now. Um, a lot of young a lot of young, really talented players out here, so um, happy to be here, coming in in a pretty good spot, uh, better than years past, so looking forward to the week. And just recap your season for us. Two major championship victories, 12 top 10 finishes. What can you say about this year for you? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's nice to break off some wins. Uh, major championships, uh, you know, are always a bonus. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I'd you always dream of doing it, and to do it twice in, in, in one year is, is really special. So over the moon when I let my brain, you know, go, go back to that time. Um, but, you know, I'm too, I'm too busy thinking about how I just finished my last event there in Paris. So uh, maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's a bad thing, who knows. But just i uh, been trying to get ready for, for these playoffs. Awesome. With that, we'll open it up to questions. If you can just raise your hand, we'll get a microphone over to you. Start over here on the left. Xander, you mentioned you're in even better form than you were in past years, but this is a course that's given you a little bit of trouble. What's been difficult about it for you? It's a hard golf course. Uh, it's not the, the longest of courses, so you really have to be in, in position often. And there's a sneaky lot more water than you'd think, too. So, if, I mean, I think it's one of those courses where if you're slightly off and you feel like you want to press – kind of what happened to me uh, Sunday at Paris, uh, type, one of those types of courses. You know, you're a little, you know, guys can make it look really easy if they're on. Uh, the greens are pure, you know, uh, conditions are really good. And if you're hitting good putts and good shots, you're going to shoot, you know, six, seven under out here. And if you're just a little bit off on a few of those par threes, you're going to hit in the water. Uh, you know, your, your difference of hitting it to like 10 or 15 feet from the hole or hitting it straight in the water. Um, there's a few holes like that out here, and it can really penalize you. So... That and also I think just it, it being Bermuda, I grew up on the West Coast and you know, I'm hoping that me living in Florida for the last year has helped me a little bit uh, you know, on this sort of grass. We'll head to Ben next. Right, uh, given your position in the FedEx Cup, what's the balance this week given the heat, etc., cetera, um, competing here and keeping an eye on what's coming? Yeah, and then we go to 6,500 feet and then back to Atlanta where it's really hot and Gonna have to learn a new golf course. It looks like, uh, based on photos. So, you know, my team's talking to me about, you know, managing things correctly, being smart about it. And to me, I'm, I'm just in, in my head. I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, if you're trying to win this thing, trying to be the best player uh, over the course of this year, you're gonna have to just do better and be better than everyone else. So, uh, I'm not really too worried about, you know, I, I got a really good team around me making sure I'm eating the right things, doing the right things to, to stay in, in good shape physically and, and mentally. But push comes to shove, you're going to have to be a dog at some point. As, I guess, dominant as both you and Scotty have been, um, you'll go to East Lake, whether it be ahead, a couple behind, etc. Uh, are you particularly happy that it's there, given your record there, and you'll only potentially be a few shots back at worst? Yeah, I mean, it's always been my goal to go in there, you know. Uh, Andrew Green's redone the golf course. I know he's a big fan of taking trees out and sort of changing bunkering and, you know, going back to what the course used to look like. Um, so I'm not sure how the course is going to look. It looked completely, you know, the photos look majestic online, you know, the few shots of the course. And, man, the photographer did a good, nice job taking those photos at that time of day. The course looked like it was in a fairy tale, but... It looked different. You know, the greens are going to be different. You know, you look at like a colonial where the greens are new, they're concrete, balls are bouncing everywhere. That's not how we're used to playing East Lake. you know. We're used to being rewarded if you're in the fairway and then not you can't bounce a ball up any hole because, you know, the, the grass Kikuya is going to stick. And I think they changed the grass around the greens and on the greens. So I'm, I'm looking at it like a I'm going to be there for the first time mentality. We'll head over to the left here, second row. Xander, you mentioned your uh, your recent Olympic experience. Um, you taking home the gold in uh, Tokyo, Scotty taking it home in Paris. Um, what, what what's your reflection on your Olympic performance, and what's the transition or continuity that you get, you know, from international play back to PGA play? Yeah, it's uh, it was an unbelievable experience in France. You know, I think everyone that sort of talked about competing, you know, Tokyo versus versus Paris, it was Tokyo had so much potential. Uh, 
you know, play, I played in Japan the first time we went, and being on that first tee with Rory and JT, I mean, we were looking around and felt like a major championship. We, you know, nine, ten, twelve people, twelve rows deep on the first tee, and it was so so bummed out that COVID hit and we weren't able to have fans in Tokyo. So we got rewarded with a lot of really good fans in, in Paris. Starting on Thursday, the atmosphere was was unreal. I had you know my two Pavone playing behind me, and <laughs> it was it was a, a chant pretty much all day long, and uh, it was it was a really really cool stadium like feel and. Um, you know, coming back to to play on the PJ Tour is, is just different. I mean, it's a different pace. It's a different crowd. Um, you know, there isn't this sort of patriotism that's attached to it, you know, that, that sort of brings everyone in, into it, I guess. So uh, kind of back to your sort of individual feel almost. What is Sean next? Going to altitude next week with launch monitors, is that something you're able to just make an adjustment Tuesday, Wednesday, or have you had to, to work at home with TrackMan and Try to get your numbers now, or, or how does that work? It's uh, on site is the easiest. I mean, you can try to. I mean, if you change the altitude on a you know Florida course where it's z you know zero feet, you get an eight iron that goes 215 yards or whatever. You're not going to really believe it. You know what I mean? So, I think it's going to help to sort of have your brain hit or see it, your eyes see it, and have your brain sort of realize, okay, that ball actually flew 225 yards downwind. And there was an eight iron or something like that. You know, I heard there's a, a few 90 foot drops over water. Par threes are 220 yards, and you're sitting there like, is that an eight iron or <laughs> five iron or you know? So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting for everyone. And then Sawgrass is a golf course that medium length, a lot of dog legs, a lot of trouble. Is it all at all comparable to here? And you've had a better record there than here. If so, why? It's a fair question. Uh, Slightly different, I'd say. Uh, I've, you know, I played really well. I mean, I've played well both times now, fortunately, where it was in March versus May. One was really firm, dried out. You know, I just remember, you know, Webb Web killed everyone that week. <laughs> I think he was up like nine shots at one point. So uh, it, it's different. This always feels, seems to play a little bit softer. Um, but very much in the fairway. If you're in that rough out here, I mean, you're going to hit, I think today I hit like, you know, a few wedges. I went 100, you know, sandwich. I went like 145 yards. It's just sort of like, you don't really get to practice that. You just have to get used to it and feel it and trust that the ball's going to do what it's doing, bouncing around, uh, coming out of that uh, Bermuda. Awesome. We'll go to Bob next. Xander, you just chalk up that final day at the Olympics is a rare bad one for you, or, you know, maybe not bad, but not. It was bad. You, you've, you've You've obviously had a lot of good ones mm -hmm. of late and a, and, a, and a strong year, but I mean, can you just chalk it up to it? You don't know, you're not going to always have it. Yeah, I mean, I'm stubborn. I, I'm always, yeah, my, my team would be the first people to tell you that. You know, they ask me how I'm doing. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, you know, I'm always fine, but, you know, I, I was probably more tired than I thought I was. And yeah, I take pride in finishing strong, and to do that was, was, I was pretty bummed out. You know, I went from thinking I can, you know, have a good look at gold to maybe silver, then to bronze, and then to, wow, I'm just spectating now. Uh, that's sort of what happened, you know, in the last 10 or 9, I guess, 8, 7 holes, that 8 holes of that tournament. So that was a bit of a bummer, just especially with how, how the fans were out there. It was must have been such a cool feeling to be in the hunt with important shots coming down that stretch, you know, 15 to 18. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I look at it, I just want to identify, you know, sat down with Chris already, just try to identify sort of what happened. You know, I don't want to get back into any old habits that, that I've been trying to get out of in this last two or three months working with him. And uh, I think some old ones sort of slipped in there. And when I tried to put my foot down, it, it got worse and uh, paid the price for it heavily. How does it feel or how did the feeling compare to other tournaments maybe where you were disappointed after the last round like did, did it feel worse or the same like as any tournament where you thought you had a great chance and weren't able to do it it's so weird it is uh, i'm not gonna lie it's the weirdest feeling um you know i was i was watching from the sort of family section uh the you know the podium you know and when scotty was up there and you know our flag was raised and he started crying up there and you know i was i was butthurt about my own round and then i was sitting there like 
yeah, this is pretty cool. <laughs> so it was, I like to think I'm not, I can try, I can be rational most times, but I felt so emotional in that state to where I was butthurt about how I played and then sort of proud and happy that Scotty won it. And it, it's a, it's such a, it's hard to explain, you know, the, the swing of it. Come, and then, you know, out here this week playing with him these next two days and we're all trying to beat our heads in. So it's a, it's a funny feeling. Time for a couple more. We'll go to Dave next. Yeah, Xander, does that, does that pride that you felt extend to the fact that you won a gold medal three years earlier? I mean, that you got to do that? Maybe. Podium. I'm not sure. I just think it's just being American, I guess, you know? You're just, you, see your, you, you, know, you see your flag being raised and your national anthem played and you're sitting there sort of, you know, humming, the, humming it in your head. And, uh -huh. you know, you get that sort of feeling uh, that we don't really get too often anymore. Are you, uh, are you, what? you know, I was wondering if maybe you ran out of gas a little bit at, in Paris, but are you rested now and is, is there an excitement to the playoff starting? Or of, yeah, right? of course. I mean, of course. This is a, I was already thinking of how I can sort of rest and, and get back, get back into, you know, sharp mental, a mental state just for these last three weeks. You know, it's going to be the biggest thing, just being able to focus and, Obviously, you know, you expect your body to, to make the leaps with the heat and the alt altitude and the heat again. And But to me, it's, it's part of our job, you know. We're supposed to be preparing for that all, you know, during the offseason and all year long. Uh, I remember, you know, Rory's won the FedEx Cup so many times now. And I remember a few times when it was really hot in East Lake, I was playing with him. And I felt so, like, overheated at times. And that really pissed me off. And he was just kind of cruising through. And I was like, man, this guy's in much better shape than I am, you know what I mean? So I was something I really try to work on to get a little bit better cardio shape so I'm not, you know, sitting there feeling like I'm going to explode at Eastlake. Uh, you know, you see guys look overheated all the time this week at Eastlake and all those, you know, it just, it just happens when it gets hot. Well, it must be working. Last thing, uh, cigar of choice after the British Open. What did you um, smoke? And how many? I just smoked one. I smoked one with my dad. Uh, what was it? I don't know what it was. It was... Uh, this guy, actually, I know there's a blender shop we used to go to at, at San Diego State. It was really random, but we'd always be hung over going to this blender shop to sort of get a banana smoothie to make yourself feel better. And he, the, the owner of it was actually out at Troon and gave, I think, my dad or Austin cigars. And those were the ones that we had, oddly enough. You know, we didn't have any with us. Right. Um, Wait a minute. You didn't have any with you? It's like a, it's, a, it's a weird thing, you know. You you don't want to like jinx yourself by bringing it a lot, and then you do bring it, and then it's awkward, you know. Like there was time I think when for one of the team events, like I had a bunch of cigars, and you know we lost, and I was like, yeah. should I give them away or <laughs> can't smoke them? <laughs> but you don't remember what it was, or you didn't know? It was, uh, I think it was some sort of Monte Cristo. It was it was nice. I mean, I could have smoked. Yeah, I was gonna say something terrible, and it would have been amazing. Yeah, why would you care, right? Awesome. I'm not too picky. Hey, you won. Thank you. That's it for questions, Andrew. Thank you so much for Perfect. the time. Thank Good luck you. this week.